song. Yeah, I know you do. Hey, everybody, how are you? Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where in the world you are. We get people over in New Zealand and Australia that listen to this. That's a 14 hour time difference. Um, how's everybody doing? My name is Jeff Gellman of Solid Canine Training. This is Linda. Of She's what? Solid Canine Solid. Training. She's the one that ans uh, asks all the questions. This is our Q and A show. I do it. Um, I do it. I try to do it at least once a week, um, uh, uh, and sometimes I'll miss a week. But anyway, so glad you could join. This is a great, great platform for folks to be able to ask your dog training questions. If you're brand new to my world, if you're brand new to my show, you know, welcome. Um, now, if you don't know who I am, that's fine. Just go to solidcaninetraining.com. We've got thousands and thousands of free videos out there. We are on Instagram. We are Instagram. We are on Facebook. We are on YouTube. Um, and uh, I specialize in aggression rehab and um, behavior modification. We obviously do, um, you know, basic obedience and advanced obedience, both on leash and off leash. But my specialty is stopping unwanted behaviors. Why? That's why dogs are turned into shelters. Dogs are turned into shelters for, for not being able to stop an unwanted um, uh, behavior. So uh, I'm going to talk about punishment a lot. So if you're brand new to my show, I talk about punishment. Punishment is not abuse. Um, punishment is you know, the only way to stop an unwanted behavior. Ironically, if you go to our training center, 90% of our day is rewards. We reward constantly because we want dogs to do certain things. But um, a lot of the questions that I'm going to get on the show tonight, and well as the other 450 other shows that I've done, is how do I stop this? How do I stop this? It's a good question to actually ask any um, um, dog trainer, actually, is how do you stop an unwanted behavior? And they should be able to um, answer that probably within about three to five seconds. Um, so um, these answers are quick. We get a lot of them. And let's get going. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And thank you, Denise. Marnie, cool dog. I appreciate your compliments. Oh, awesome. Um, boo -boo -boo. Tips on proofing recall. Um, tips on proofing recall. So we remote collar train dogs. So if you're not on a remote collar, you know, I mean, before remote collars were around, dogs did come back. But we remote collar train dogs on recall. It's probably the most efficient way to do it. Um, it's also good with high levels of distraction. So what you're going to do is her makeup looks fantastic because it is unique. So and unique is the brand that she she wears and actually also sells. Um, so uh, what I would do is I would make sure that you've got um, your dog remote collar trained, and if you've got a if you've got a dog that's got good ball drive, what I would do is I'd make sure that you have a your dog in an enclosed area and you throw the ball. And then um, right when your dog's about halfway to the ball, have it on a long line, use the remote and call your dog back. If your dog doesn't listen, go up high on the remote, but you've got the leash to give you guidance. So that's how you're going to be able to start proofing recall, proofing it off of a ball um, that a dog really likes or if a dog is playing with other dogs um, if there's something more interesting on the other side of the fence but always do it in an enclosed area so you want your dog to understand what a high level correction is on the remote collar um, in order to make sure your dog will actually listen to you and you want to do lots of repetitions lots but keep the um, um, uh, 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 keep uh, a long line on your dog next Thank you for your vids. Train my dog on all your stuff. Works flawlessly. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad the free videos are working for you. Awesome. Uh, hello from Ontario. Hey, Ontario. I'll be up in actually um, Collingwood, um, and then I'll be over in um, uh, over by uh, in British Columbia as well. i got two seminars. You can go to rvdogtrainer.com. Um, um, I actually uh, travel the world doing dog training seminars, so um, that's, you know, go to rvdogtrainer.com next. How do I stop my newly one-year-old GSD from jumping? Um, one purpose, mime. It's actually, I've got a free video on my YouTube channel. Just go into my YouTube channel, look on how to stop jumping. You're going to use a prong collar, remote collar, and it's a correctional based. It's a punishment based uh, protocol, and um, uh, uh, it takes about three seconds to do, and you can do that. Um, um, very, very easy. It's actually easier to teach stopping jumping than it is to teach a dog to sit. So you make jumping uncomfortable. It's quick. It's easy. It's efficient. But if you've got a German Shepherd, you want to make sure your dog is obviously trained in, in a lot of other things as well um, in lots of structure. Next. Uh, correct collar smart dog pair with more food. Um, you can have a, you could have a, a collar smart dog. Um, that means that you probably want to have the collar on more and you'd want to make sure your dog is underneath voice control and you want to make sure you go to punishment level on the remote. If you don't go to punishment level on the remote, 
um, uh, what happens a lot of times is that you're always prompting. So the goal is to get the dog off the remote unless it doesn't listen, which should be infrequently. And then you would go to punishment level on that. Next. Uh, love it when I can catch a live periscope. Awesome. Yeah, I love it too when I can do a live periscope. So um, so that's great. Good. Glad you're here. Next. How do I stop my Great Dane from chasing my small dog? Um, through punishment. Again, you know, this is all punishment-based stuff. How do you stop? How do you stop? How do you stop? If Just remember, if any dog trainer ever responds in some scientific way, they're full of shit. They don't know what they're talking about. It's like you do it through punishments. That's how you stop. That's how you stop. Um, so how would I how would I do that? I would use a bonker. A bonker is a wrapped up towel. You can say no, throw it at the dog. I prefer to use a remote collar to stop all, all unwanted behaviors. Why? Because I can do it up to half a mile away. I can do it without you know having to approach my dog. So it's much much easier. So you could say no, and then you can tap the remote, and the dog stops. You know pretty much instantly. Next. Thoughts on why a dog may refuse food he previously enjoyed? Um, Robin, it could be a medical issue, which I am not even close to qualified to um, answer. So it could be medical. So um, I would talk to the vet about that. But also um, what I would do is I would just make sure, you know, if you, if you didn't create a picky eater. So what I do is I feed my dogs twice a day. I, my dogs are on the raw diet, so I don't know too many dogs that ain't going to eat friggin' raw meat. Um, so what I do is I put the food down in the morning. If they don't eat within 15 minutes, take it away. Do the same thing at night. If they don't eat, take it away. So don't do any free feeding whatsoever. After two or three days, if your dog still doesn't eat the food, it's possibly that something medically is wrong with your dog. But don't take a dog trainer's advice on that. You want to talk to your vet. Next. Uh, Lynette, thank you for the hair compliment. Um, Seven-month-old puppy plays with dogs at daycare, no problem, but growls when we walk on leash. So, you know, Robin, just remember a leash is a barrier. So chances are that's just, it could be, it could be, it, 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 it would classify underneath the reactivity, frustration, possibly resource guarding of you, the human issue. And what do you do? You would say no. If your dog's on a prong collar, you would say no, and you would pop it. If it's on a remote collar, you would say no and use the, the remote. This is the downfall of using a a, a flat buckle collar, a harness, or a martingale collar as a punisher. It actually increases the drive in the dog, and it actually increases the agitation in the dog. So if you don't have anybody in the protection world, sport world, IPO world, we actually use the leash pressure on a flat buckle collar or a harness pulling back to actually increase the drive in dogs to make them bite more. Think about that. And that's what homeowner, that's what pet dog trainers or pet dog owners are doing. They're actually making their dogs be more aggressive by not using the proper tools. Next. Jeff, stop charging for making dogs better. Your thousands of free videos don't seem to be enough. Jamal, you know what? You obviously, you want, you obviously, you know, uh, uh, followed my Instagram stories um, this week, and it's just really, really funny that the 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 lack of um, in, the, the lack of the entitlement that folks have. Like, if you're going to ask one of the most expensive dog trainers in the country for free stuff, I'm I'm going to direct you to free videos, um, but I'm probably not going to be able to uh, uh, have your dog come here. But ironically, we give away a hundred thousand dollars in free dog training a year. That's not information. That's actually real dog training. I do that through extending people's boarding trains at no additional charge. And I do that by giving out free tickets to my seminars. I've had seminars that I've given away $5,000 worth of tickets to. Um, and I do 24 seminars a year. I've given out considerably amount of um, free stuff. So whenever anybody throws that entitlement bullshit and that, that, that victim mentality bullshit at me, I can just laugh. Next. When training recall drills, dog ends up just sticking by me. Send away somehow? Um, I, um, is that Natalie or Natalia? Natalie? Natalie. Natalie, I don't teach send away stuff. But what you can do is down the dog, place the dog, sit the dog, and then you can then you can get some distance stuff. Next. Does the remote collar work at the beach or does sand salt water affect it? No, no, Ryan, they're, they're, I can only speak for e-collar technologies because that's the one we use. I'm pretty sure that dog trail also is waterproof because a lot of hunt dogs, you know, use them as well. In fact, a dog trail is waterproof. I'll, I'll go out and say that. Garmin, I'm not sure. 
Um, so what I would do is, um, yes, they are. They're waterproof. After salt water, though, I would wash them off with, rinse them off with some tap water, though. But yeah, your 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 towers are good for thirty meters down. And for all my non-metric people, just divide, multiply one meter times thirty-nine inches. Next. Does a remote, oh no, just yep. that. will the two puppies you currently have be remote off-leash trained when done? Um, uh, Moo will be, Moo will be um, um, off-leash trained. Um, uh, uh, Buddha is with us for eight weeks. So probably not because you can only do so much. It, we got the dog at eight weeks old. So up, we're, we're not going to have the dog up to 16 weeks old. The dog will have some pretty mad skills, but we're not going to probably have enough time to do it fully off leash trained. But that's not why the dog is with us. The dog's with us to get an incredible head start on life. And um, it's learning a huge amount of stuff. Next. And how long are you keeping Moo? That Moo is technically Jordan's dog. Technically Jordan's dog. Um, so. Um, that's up to her. She might keep Moo. She's raising him um, and training him to be a uh, working, he's going to work livestock. Um, so that's up to her. That's on, that's on her. But at least six months. Next. How do I train my dog to shit in one area? So, Ma you. so Mac Attack, what I want you to do is I want you to um, create your dog. Um, create your dog at... Um, um, at, uh, 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 at night, create your dog when you're not home, put your dog on a slip lead when you take it out to go to the bathroom, go to a certain spot in the yard and plant your feet and um, um, plant your feet. And um, uh, 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 you will be able to um, then have to go to the bathroom there for the first couple of days, maybe leave a couple pieces of poop in that yard. Um, and then that's how you'll do it next. My beagle won't stop sniffing while on leash. She's on a prong. I pop and correct. She is stubborn. So Natalie, you're doing, you're not popping hard enough. So if I was to walk your dog, it wouldn't sniff. So you're probably nagging the dog. There's a 180 move that I do. Watch my video on the 180 move. It's on my YouTube channel. Just go into my channel and do my search box. Type in 180, do that. Remote Cower is going to dramatically help you with, um, as well. Next. How much should I exercise my GSD daily? Um, that's personal choice. Personal choice on your lifestyle, you know, at least an hour. But don't, you don't have to exercise. You don't have to run your dog for five hours a day or you build yourself an athlete. So it all depends on what you want your dog for and what you're planning on doing. Next. How to build confidence in puppies currently fostering. Um, what you're going to do is a lot of, if you saw, um, uh, actually, if you join our Patreon page, if you, there's a link. Um, you can go to Patreon. It's solid. It's Patreon slash Solid Canine Training. It's easy to find. We actually have a video of some puppy raising, confidence building stuff that we're doing. Um, but going underneath things, going over things, um, obedience train your dog, having it climb on different surfaces, exposing it to different sounds, play different um, soundtracks of different noises, fireworks, um, thunder, guns. Um, um, uh, all, you know all those things. Um, and then um, uh, don't coddle. Fear. Next. Tips on daily structured walks in the hot concrete asphalt jungle that is South Florida. So Melinda, um, after 10 a.m., you probably can't walk your dog. So that's, I would treadmill train your dog. I would treadmill train your dog. Yeah, so usually after 10 a.m., um, um, and, and then you have to wait till maybe sometimes 9 to 10 p.m. at night. Um, anywhere, like if you're in Phoenix or Las Vegas or, Cal or, um, or, or Southern Florida. So treadmill train, next. Finally got my dog on prong, working great. He's five months old. When should I start e collar? And you could have started it already, so start it right away. Start it right away. Just layer it, layer it over the existing commands with food, with the pressure on, pressure off theory of dog training that we teach. I've got free videos on our YouTube channel for that. Next. I wish our Chihuahua could play with other dogs. She always wants to charge them. What can we do? Well, um, I don't want your um I don't want your your Chihuahua to play with other dogs. Don't worry about it. Let's just stop the dog two hours from charging other dogs. So that, you, how do you stop it? So the question is, how do you stop your dog from charging other dogs? You do that through punishment. Like you stop any other behavioral commands. So if you're just tuning in, the only way to increase a wanted behavior is through a reward-based system, which we do. The only way to stop an unwanted behavior is through a punishment-based system, which is what we also do. So what I would do is I would, pet your dog as well but i know people will do it without asking i get the, i understand the conversation next yes love that you are a raw feeder awesome amy thanks 
Foster dog biting leash as soon as I clip it on, how to stop. Beverly, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a get a bonker. A bonker is a cotton towel. It's wrapped up into like a, a roll. Imagine this is a cotton towel. It's not, it's just a femur bone. Um, and then you would actually just say it bites the le bites the leash. You would say no, and you'd bonk the dog. You're using a punisher to stop an unwanted behavior, which is the only way unwanted behaviors can be stopped. Next. Dog eats the same food every day. Should we change it? Chihuahua, 11 years old. Not at all. Just keep, I mean, if you want to add stuff to it, um, J. Triv, if you want to add stuff to it, you can't. You know what? It depends on where you live, but, you know, we, we give our Chihuahuas beef hearts. They love chicken hearts, I mean. Chicken hearts. They love little, love they love little chicken hearts. The, um, gizzards are good. Turkey necks are good. You can do that. Next. Any more nose work videos coming up? Russell, nothing in the game plan. I'm so busy to even do you know a lot of nose work with my own dog. Next. Uh, top three commands a dog should know? A uh, place command, um, uh, the word no and the word yes. Uh, the place command is probably number one, and then recall probably would be number two. Um, and obviously, if you've got, and you, know, and, and you need to know how to stop unwanted behaviors. Next. Told, told stranger he could not pet dogs. After arguing, he darted off and jumped over and between the dogs. Both dogs reacted, lunging and barking. Should we have corrected dogs or humans? So, Megan, first of all, we call those people fucking assholes. Mm. And I would carry bear spray on you, and I would have sprayed that dog. If I had a taser, I would have tased that dog. That, that, that person, if it was a male, should have gotten a good, hard, swift kick in the fucking balls. And if you know any self-defense at all, the palm to the nose is a very effective way to break a nose or a clenched fist to the throat in a good, hard throat punch. Don't correct your dogs, though. I would have fucking let my dogs go and let them join in. And I'm being 100% percent serious next i fucking can't stand the rudeness of human beings the entitlement of human beings next 130 pound mastiff walks great with prong but one dog nearby has re reactivity but no reactivity with multi-dogs with one dog yeah i mean this is the thing quinn it could be it could be it could be when there's a lot of dogs it could be overwhelming it's like you put one dog in a pack of dogs and they do really well sometimes. You know what I mean? And then you put them with like only one dog and they get all tough. So it could be that. So, um, um, so what I would, what I would do is what I would do is it's reactivity. Quinn, you know how to fix the reactivity through, you know, leash correction, remote collar correction. Make sure you do it at the first sign of arousal and um, just be aware of that and role play. You've got to find places to role play it over and over and over again. Next. Uh, walk my dog on an e-collar heel, but she still scans and appears nervous. Could I be underwhelming? Robin, you could be underwhelming your dog, and the the best thing you can do for a nervous for a nervous dog is um 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 is you want to uh make sure you've got enough leadership and structure in that dog's life. So you could be underwhelming the dog. We want to get that dog to stop scanning around and to focus more on you. Next, I would like a German Shepherd. Michelle, get, there's plenty of them out there. Just be careful. There's a lot of messed up ones out there. We see them all the time. So, but there's plenty of German Shepherds in rescue right now. Shelters are filled up. Foster homes are filled up with German Shepherds. Next. How often should I exercise my GSD? Um, you already asked that. You already asked that question. So next. Suggestions for submissive urination. So Stevo, I'm the wrong guy for the submissive urination and excitement urination question. We don't get a lot of that, but I will tell you, if you do a balanced training program with lots of structure, lots of leadership, lots of yeses for what we want, noes for what we don't want, you're going to get yourself a dog that probably lessens it. But what I would do is right now take a lot of excitement out of the dog's life, lots of structure, monitor its water, check it for a UTI, um, make sure there's no medical issues. Next. Um, I take audit spot at Justine and Josh's. No victim here. Paid working spot when I get a dog. JK. JK, I'm not asking for a free spot. So, Kayla, if you would like a free ticket to my seminar, you absolutely, or an audit ticket, if you want a free ticket to my audit, to, to my seminar at Justine's place, email me at jeff at solidk9training.com. You can have a free ticket. I have no problem giving shit away for free. None whatsoever. Absolutely not. I love that I can do that. Next.
I lost my min miniature pincher three days ago. Why does losing a dog give you so much pain? Camilla, is that, I mean, first of all, if he did, I'm sorry, it sucks. Why does it give so much pain? I think you can answer that question yourself. Next. And I'm not being cold and uncaring at all. Can you teach a dog to go potty on command? Gregory, yes, mine do. These guys do, right? Sorry, everybody on YouTube, you can't see this. I apologize. Right there. Next. Did you answer the submissive urination question? I did. I did. I answered submissive urination a little bit ago. It might have been to another person. No, Next. it's the same, but I, yep. was, I don't remember you yep. answering. Yep, Steve-O, I did, yep. Um, took your advice and started doing nose work with my dog. So much fun. Thank you. Awesome, Russell. And Russell, there's a lot of great people out there making really great videos on nose work. You know, way better, way more qualified than me. Hello, I'm about to introduce a puppy to our family. What level of biting during dog play is acceptable? So, Sue, that's a really good question. Ideally, the older dogs will correct the younger dog. I let my two, do two of my dogs, I let play really rough. I let them play extremely, extremely rough with each other not with any other dog. So, you know, if it does, at the beginning, I would be more on the conservative side because you have no idea if it will escalate or not. And if you're going to allow your dogs to be aroused, you better be able to cut, cut, cut the arousal out immediately. Next. How can I get my puppy not to charge the door when the bell rings? Taught her to go to place, but she charges to place now. So Robin, any, remember, how do you, the question is, how do you stop an unwanted behavior? You do that through punishments. So you can do that with a remote collar, dog races towards the front door. And um, what you'll do is you'll say, you know, no, and the remote collar gives it a correction or say no and throw a bonker at the dog. What I don't want you to do when your dog is charging through the front door, I did it. I did a what would Jeff do tip on this is don't use an obedience command. Dog goes towards the front door. Don't say place or recall your dog because you want the word to be no. So you want it, you actually want to give a punishment to your dog and not a, 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 not a, um, uh, um, an obedience command to your dog. Next. Treadmills it is. Nights are so dimly lit in my neighborhood. Creepy even while packing. So exactly. Um, Michelle, Michelle, I talk about that all the time about treadmills. It's like. It's Melinda. Melinda, sorry. Melinda, I talk about that all the time. You know, is like a lot of people live in neighborhoods that you don't want to be out at night um, or you don't feel safe at night. Or you don't feel comfortable. So treadmills are great. How to help dogs with anxiety. Um, Kevin, get the dog off drugs for starters. If it's on drugs, I've got a separation anxiety video that I want you to watch. Um, what I want you to do is have massive amounts of structure. Be a leader. Lead the dog. Not be a boss, but be a leader. There's a huge difference. Um, uh, be um you know, being a leader and a boss. So be your dog's leader, tons of structure, lots of guidance. You actually can correct a dog that has anxiety and fear, um, hold your dog accountable and get your dog out of your bed, create your dog, no dog on the furniture. Be careful you don't use any over affection that actually can make the anxious behavior worse. Next. How do you stop a dog biting out of frustration? So Sarah, um, it's a choice the dog is making. You know, you'd stop, the way you stop biting is through punishment. So it's a choice. So a lot of times people identify different biting. To me, yes, there are different types of biting. We can talk about fear aggression and predatory aggression and all that stuff. But the bottom line is, you're not allowed to put your mouth on me. I don't care what the reason is. So what you're gonna do is you would use a punisher. So what's a proper punisher for biting? You can do, um, uh, uh, um, you can do a, a remote collar, a bonker, or a leash correction. Next. Why do you use food over treats when training them? Um, Russell, because we're food trainers, not treat trainers. I'm, I'm not opposed to using treats, but dogs get fat. They get fat. So um, what you what, what we do is we use their daily food. Um, we use their daily food, and, and that's just how we decided to train it. Their, their, their food becomes their motivator, and they work for their food. Next. Quality. Now, if we're doing trick training, we'll often do um, a high-value treat for trick training. Next. Quality over quantity when meeting dogs, right? Jake, absolutely. Thick haired dogs, how do you cut to fit for e collar? Jamal, what you can do is you can do um uh what you can do is you can do a uh thick fur contact points and they come in different lengths. And then um also if you have to shave down a little bit of the fur here and here you can. Next. Um new foster bites at least nope, we got that yep. one. How do I join Patreon? Good one. Go to Jimmy, go to um there's a direct link on my website, solidk9training.com. There's a link on my Instagram page in my bio. 
But if you go to Patreon, just put in solid canine training and it should take you there. And then it shows you all the different things that you can, the different levels that you can be a, 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 a sponsor, I think they call it, a patron of. Next. I'm not sure what this one goes with from Jamal. How much? I'm sorry. Um, I, don't, um, I don't remember. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, hello from Brazil. Hey, Brazil. How are you? I don't speak Portuguese. Sorry. Um, can you show us your home kennel in a vid? I absolutely love Matt's house and enjoy your Kayla, videos. I've shown it many times before. Um, many times before. There, there's there's videos out there. Look for a video of, go to my YouTube channel and look for a video of Angelo feeding the dogs. I was thinking of that one. You know, Angelo feeding the dogs. And, and there's a video of him feeding the dogs in, in, in its next. Um, my dog tries to attack the bonker. So you're probably doing it wrong. You're probably doing it wrong. Um, the dog should be afraid of the, um, uh, 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 of the bonker. Hold on one second. Sorry for getting my face in, in the camera, guys. All right. So, um, it, it should be done. Um, uh, it, should be, it should be the word no, and then you really want to throw that bonker pretty hard down on the dog. Next. It's a nicely shaped. Yeah, not really, but sorry. I had to fix. I'm videotaping this too, and I don't know why the camera shut off. That's Next. a nice compliment, though. Um, dogs, dog digs hole in his fenced in area only when I'm not home. Is there a way to prevent this? Ben, you've got to catch the dog in the act. you got to catch the dog in the act, and you have to use the remote collar. So set up a video camera. So set up a video camera, and then um, uh, leave the house, and then correct the dog. It's really the only way to do it. And people are going to say, put water in the hole. Put shit in the hole. I'm like, then you'll have a shitty wet dog. Next. Hi from San Francisco. Hey, San Francisco. What's up? I haven't been there yet. Um, when would you neuter a puppy? Sue, I'm the wrong person to ask on that. Um, I would, um, that's a vet. That's between you and the vet. Um, I'd wait till the dog was at least a year old. Um, um, there are some breed specific guidelines. Um, my next male dog, I'll probably keep intact. So I don't know. Next. Lab is reactive to dogs, especially with barrier. Could hanging outside a dog park desensitize? So uh, hanging outside of a dog park with training will definitely help. So what you want to do is you want to figure out a way to stop the, um, um, the, the, the barrier frustration. Um, and that would be through punishment. So you can do that. Next. Uh, what's, what's Jamal? Okay. Nothing's wrong with me, buddy. Next. People have no decency these days. Always so offended when told they can't pet someone's dog. Melinda, it's not about decency. It's called they're 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 se they're selfish. People want to pet your dog. So let's just just let me just tell you the the dynamics. The only reason why people want to pet your dog, it's not because they care about the dog, and it's not because they care about you. The only reason that anybody wants to pet your dog is because they care about themselves. That's it. They're selfish human beings. They're not doing it to make the dog happy. They're not doing it to make you happy. They're making it to do it to, to make themselves happy. And the only reason that they don't listen to you when you tell them no is because you just took the fun away from them. And they don't like that, again, because they're selfish. So then now they're selfish and they're rude. That's, that's the dynamic of that person. And people can, like, people say, oh, no, 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 no. It's like, yeah. It's common sense. That's why people want to pet your dog is because it makes them happy. They don't do things. They're not going to do it because it makes the dog happy. It makes them happy. Next. Strangers actually bark at my dog often. He's super reactive, so they think it's fun. So you've got a bunch of you live with you live around a bunch of assholes. So you know, you know. Sorry. I mean, it's it sucks. It it, it sucks. So you know. There's nothing you can do about it except for proofing your dog off barking assholes. So what you've got to do is get your dog to walk really well on a nice heel, use a remote collar, um, and then what you're going to do is have a bunch of strangers go by your dog, and I'm being serious here, and bark randomly, and then you want to proof your dog off of that. So you have to sort of asshole-proof your dog. And it's no different than if, like, your dog reacts to a cat or a car, or a truck, or an ATV or lawnmower, or kids running around. It's just the same, it's the same thing. Next. My dog freezes 
when he sees a dog while on leash, even from across the street, what to do? So what you do is um, um, you lead your dog and you tell them to heal and you give the leash a leash pop and you just keep moving. Keep moving with your dog. Next. Always love tuning into your advice. We'll keep an eye out for you next time you're in West Coast, Florida. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Ryan, I'm actually going to be in Bradenton on the – I'm buying another house down in Florida on the 9th. I fly in on the 8th. We close on the 9th. I'll be in Bradenton for, what, four days? Oh. I think for four days after that because i got to buy all the furniture for the house. All the i got to buy 100% of the furniture and the wall stuff and the dishes and the pots and the pans and the coffee coffee maker and, and toaster oven and – and lawn furniture and pool equipment and and all that stuff. So I'll be I'll be down there. I'll be down there for, on the on the ninth in Bradenton next. Uh, let's see. With leash biting dog, will correction with e collar work as well as bonkers? Try both, Beverly. Try both. Next. Next. Walking two dogs. Both one, both on same side or one on each side. Uh, Russell. Um. It's up to you, buddy. To, to me, I prefer to put them both on one side, so I've got a free um, a free hand. You know, drinking you know drinking a beverage or texting or being on the foot, like whatever. Yeah. Next. Recommendations for nose work vid. Need to train my dog for scent before I can become qualified trainer. Um, Amy, who do they recommend? If you're over in Australia, um, uh, ah, shit. What's his name? There's a couple of guys that are really good um, uh, on nose work. Um, go on to YouTube and look it up. Go on. I'm, I'm trying. I'm not trying to blow you off, Amy. Amy, I love you. I love you. I know who you are. You Facebook messaged me. I know who you are. I love you. Um, I'm, I just I can't I can't think of anybody's name off the top of my head right now. But if you go on to YouTube, um, there's some people out there that do it. Go to Learberg. Go to the Learberg.com. There's there'll be there'll be some videos on there. Next. My dog will be staying with a sitter while I'm on vacation. Ramsey nose work. Thank you. I was thinking of Ramsey nose work. Thank you. Next. My dog will be staying with a sitter while I'm on vacation. Any advice to prevent we don't know what? Nancy, if you have to ask me that question, then it might be the wrong sitter. But let me see what the next part of the question is. Next. Is it hard to breed a pug? I don't know. I'm not a breeder. I don't know much about procreation um, other than... You know, the dog thingy goes into the other dog thingy, and then next thing you know, there's like an explosion, and then you know, 62 days later or something, little dogs come out. Next, I actually don't know much about breeding, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. I would talk to a Google, Google uh, pugs, and you'll probably get all the information you need to know. Next, he still doesn't know how we had all these kids, right? We have seven kids. So. Um, should my dog be able to eat sticks, bark, pine cones, and etc.? Is it healthy and can it be stopped? Then. Your dog will die. So, no, it's not healthy, and yes, it can be stopped. Next. No way. This show has been troll proof up to this point. Jamal, there's been some trolls on. I'm letting them slide. They haven't been. They haven't, they haven't been that bad. They haven't been, you know, a hole trolls. Next. Uh, shut down dog pancakes and refuses to move, and is so strong I can't move him. He pulls to get back to hide. How to help? Um, remote power motivation. Boom. Remote tower. Next. Don't jinx it. Yep. I need another rant. LOL. Sorry, Jamal. Come up with something. Um, I try to breed my pug, but I find it hard to keep it still. Oh, ha ha. You're fine. Right, right. I should get rid of that person. That's fine. Yeah. Um, oh, that was how to how much hair to cut down. Thanks, though. Remember the yep, remote yep, collar? Yep, yep. So you don't have to go down to the skin, but probably enough down to like that long. Next. If a dog wears a halty in public, can it bite, or what can it do to play fetch with toys? Um, I don't know. We don't use we don't use halty. Dogs can bite through, you know. Dogs can bite through um, a lot of stuff. But they do make a gentle leader. I think the gentle leader brand you can actually hold up and close the dog. But if you're worried about your dog biting, muzzle your dog. Um, muzzle your uh, uh, muzzle your dog with a basket muzzle next. Will a seven-month-old puppy become more confident in time naturally? Um, not necessarily. Not we breed a lot of two, three, four, five-year-old dogs that are not confident. All depends on what you're doing. What you're doing. All depends on you as the leader. Genetics has a little bit to play into it, but more of it is you as the human being, how much confidence you're giving your dog and making sure you're not reinforcing any fear, which happens all the time with owners. Most owners do reinforce dog's fear not on purpose though next um emailed you might have missed the answer 
for my last question, but I'll rewatch. If Kayla, if you emailed me a question, I most likely didn't answer it because I get dozens of questions a day. So if you need what, so this is the way it works, Kayla. I so love she, she asked a question on here and she missed it. That's what happened. And so she emailed you. It wasn't, she emailed you a question. Okay. Okay. So okay. Oh, you emailed me about Collingwood. Okay. But you can't check it because you're Oh, oh <laughs> it's, on it's on here now. Oh, you emailed me. I'm giving you a free ticket. Oh, I thought you were about Because I get a lot of people that say they emailed me and I didn't get back to them about a question and I can't answer questions I'm, I'm through email. I got it. Next. Um, Ferocious growling sounds when my dog yes. plays with siblings. Yes. Um, don't worry about it. It's most likely play. Next. When punishing my dog, should I say dog's name then no or just no? Christy, never say your dog's name and then no. Your dog will be like, every time you say your dog's name, it'll go, ah, shit, what did I do wrong? Next. What about if you have multiple dogs, though? Then you give them, you, you call them by colors. <laughs> Next. Okay. Um, Seven-month-old anxious with e collar shakes in place. Collar on every day last eight weeks. How to overcome it? Um, it could be, Joshua, you could be using, you could be over, you could be using the, Collar too high. I don't know. Um, uh, uh, hold on. Two in a row. Impressive. Um, you could be using the collar too high. Also, um, uh, what you could do is if you stopped a bunch of unwanted behaviors and now the dog's in place, it's possible that the the trembling is the lack of the dog doing the unwanted behaviors. So it, the, the dog is still out of whack. It's still out of balance. There'd be a lot of variables though. A lot of variables though. Next. We do see a lot of shaking dogs once we stop their unwanted behaviors though. Tips on desensitizing for the bath. Dog freaks out. Um, Jake, I'm just, you know, what you can do is you can do all food protocols if you want to. So put the dog in the bathtub, feed it its daily meals. Um, you can do clicker training in the bath. Um, start adding water. You can just do all kinds of like desensit desensitizing the dog. Um, you could um, uh, usually it's going to be a food based pro protocol to get them excited about the bath time. Next. Does my dog need access to water in her crate if she's there overnight? No, unless you live in the in the hot desert, they don't need it. That they don't need it at all. Next. My dog mauled a neighbor. Should it be put down? Ted. I have no idea what, you know, if, if your dog truly mauled your neighbor and your neighbor wasn't breaking in your house, I'll let you make that decision. You know, I'm, a, you know, mauling is a, who knows what that means? Like, what does that mean? Next. Need some help in Bradenton? Uh, Quinn, give me a call. Give me a call or give me an, e uh, give me a call or give me an email. Next. Um, ba -ba -ba. I'm thinking of getting an Irish Springer. Any words of warning? Um, I would talk to other Irish Springer owners on that one. Next. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate your time and your content. See you on your Aussie tour. Awesome. Uh, February 2019 is the plan. Next. I once had a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. It wouldn't stop humping my lawnmower. Why? Jordan, because your lawnmower, like you dressed up your lawnmower in, you know, fishnet, and fishnet stockings and a short skirt. Um, what you can do, what you can do is, I don't know why I did it, but to stop it, you'd use a remote collar. Next. Um, oh my, how can you stop your dog from eating outside sticks and et cetera then? Um, ben, you use a remote collar. So the dog goes to eat something outside, you use a remote collar and you um, uh, uh, give it a high level correction. But Ben, let's figure out, the bigger question is Ben, is think about, your question, if your dog's eating sticks and pine cones, those are foreign bodies going into your dog's, like that's not natural for your dog to eat. It can puncture, think about a stick. It can literally puncture intestines. So let's just, let's you know use a remote collar on that, next. Uh, da, da, da. My Aussie chews on blankets and licks the carpet and dog beds, how to stop. Um, Heidi, you would use a remote collar punisher for that, but I would check, I would have to check the dog, go to a vet and get blood work done. Let's make sure that it's um, there's no um, medical issues going on with your dog. Let's go make sure that there's no medical issues on your dog. Next. Your videos are but great. Hold on, what's, what's the breed of that dog? What dog? Oh, you have an Australian Shepherd? So if you've got an Australian Shepherd, 
you need you got yourself a working dog. I was wondering if it was an Australian Shepherd or a Border Collie. You got yourself a working dog. So that dog needs to work. So what are you working that dog on? I mean, everyone doesn't have access to sheep or cattle, but you got to figure out something to do with that dog. Those dogs can be prone to OCD type behaviors if you don't fulfill their needs. So you can do agility, you can do trick training, you can do rally. You, you got to find you got to find something. You got to find something for that dog to do. Also, teach that dog how to do a lot of nothing, do duration work. Duration work is like long places and long downs. Next. Your videos are great. I gave my first no you can't pet my dog today. Felt so good. Gracie, bam. Fist bump to you. Awesome. How do you curb tail chasing brought on by anxiety? A uh, remote collar. Remote collar fixes tail, ta ta tail chasing every single time. But also the bigger question is, how do you fix anxiety? And watch my separation anxiety video. And you're gonna do that through lots of leadership, lots of structure, and massive amounts of duration work. All right, next. How do I stop my dog from freezing at the sight of dogs? I think we answered yep, something we like next. Yep. I've seen peanut butter on the wall for motivation, distraction, Oh, like that. there you go, Kayla. That sounds like a good idea. Um, do you have a favorite type of leash? Oh, no, the le a, le a leash doesn't matter. No, I mean, I just don't like chain ones. I mean, you can use a leather leash or a nylon leash. Four to six feet is fine. I mean, the leash doesn't, the leash really doesn't matter. I mean, it just holds, it just is attached to the collar. Whatever you find comfortable. Next. Would love for you to visit San Francisco. Gracie, I'd love to do a seminar there. Find me a seminar. Actually, I'm going to be up in Seattle. I know that's not San Francisco, but that's closer to San Francisco than any, any other seminar I've ever done. Um, but uh, if you find me a location to do a seminar, I will do a seminar in San Francisco. Next. This might be a stupid question. If we attend your seminar, do we need to purchase e-collar before we attend? Um, Sarah, no, you don't. Nope, I've got them there. I've got them there. Um, if you do want to, though, get one from e-collar technologies, buy them on Amazon, or get them off of our website. But Amazon's cheaper than our website. Next. If napping dog doesn't want to come out of crate, close door and try again later or pull dog out. So Natalie, if you want the dog to come out, like if it say it's time, um, if it's time for the dog to come out, then you pull the dog out or tip the crate. Next. Um, sorry, I meant to ask you, why does he freeze? Uh, oh, the dog, freeze, the dog freezes for a couple of reasons. Um, fear pre-aggression um, or interest. So either one of those, no free pass. Get your butt moving, dog. Let's go. We got places to be. Next. Um, I will see if I could find a place for you. Okay, cool. Hi, Linda and Jeff. What are appropriate corrections for a four-month-old dog? Prong and remote? Okay? Nah, Steph, I would, depends what you're trying to correct. I wouldn't be doing a remote collar correction on a four-month-old dog. What I would be, usually what we do is we're doing so much proactive stuff that we don't have to correct that much. But if you do, I would use a bonker or a pet convincer. Next. Low or high setting for correcting barking with e-collar? Ben, the right setting. Don't be focused on the setting. So if you use a low setting and the dog doesn't stop, then you got to go higher. So the right setting. Next. Use e-collar to fix growling at food bowl, fearful dog, now anxious every meal, won't come to bowl. So, Kathy, this is what we do. You can always just take the kibble and put it on the floor, but you do the right thing. What we do is I feed all my dogs in kennels, in their crates. Put your dog in your crate, take the food bowl, put the food down, all right? 15 minutes later, take it away. Dinner time, same thing. Next day, same thing. The dog will go to the bowl. Dog will go to the bowl. We correct dogs for growling around food bowls every single time. They all end up eating. So, boom. But put them in a crate. Next. Oh, also, can I correct for obedience, non-compliance? Yes. That's what corrections are for. Or else you want to – if you don't punish a dog for non-compliance of a known command, you won't have an obedient dog. You'll have one of those dogs that have selective hearing or they're um, – uh, what's some of the other words that people use? Um, selective hearing or stubborn. Next. Thank you. My Aussie herds my pit bull when running off leash. Pity doesn't mind, but is this okay? Heidi, as long as the pity doesn't mind, it's absolutely okay. Next. It's probably fun for both of them. Next. Uh, I don't have a next right now. Awesome. So you can go to rvdogtrainer.com, 
rvdogtrainer.com. That's my seminar series. I just finished up one in Providence. I just did one last weekend in, in Baltimore. Um, great time. Great. I've got one coming up in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, um, and uh, Elkhart, Indiana next. Those are the two um, next. Have you ever done Schutzen with your dogs? I know you've done scent work also. Um, I haven't done any IPO work at all. I've done – so Kira can track and do bite work. Um, but no, I, I haven't. I'm, I, it's great. I mean, I think, I mean, IPO is fun. I mean, people should get into IPO next. Sorry. I meant non-compliance for the four month old. Oh, oh, Steph, four months old, 16 weeks. I wouldn't go. To, no, I wouldn't correct. I would start working on duration. You can start saying the word no, but I wouldn't go too hardcore on a 16 week old dog, not holding a command for long periods of time. Next. Um, Thank you for all your videos. Awesome stuff. You're welcome, Christy. Age limit to put use e-collar, five months old, okay. Michelle, five months old right. is fine. Just remember, it's not about pushing buttons. It's about training the dog, layer with food. It's important that everybody knows that remote collars, you don't just, you know, um, push the buttons. Thank you both for your help. Have a nice week. Oh, Thank you. Um, at what point is a command a known command? Sue Wilson, that's a really great question, Sue. When your dog is under voice control, so here's a great example. You tell your dog to down. It looks at you. You present food to it. It flies into a down. Your dog knows down. Your dog's playing you, right? Your dog is playing you. So if you've done an obedience command, if you practice every command 20, to 20, 20 to 30 times a day, which is, not, which is not too much for sit down in place. Seven days a week, that's anywhere from 140 to 210 times a week. Three weeks, 600 to 800 times. Your dog knows it. Your dog knows it. Next. Uh, love you guys. Thank you. From Michelle. Oh, awesome. Thank you, uh, Michelle. Uh, okay, thanks, Jeff. Makes sense. That's Steph. Yeah. Yeah, Steph, just be careful about, you know, punishing obedience too young. Next. Youngest dog tried to mount older dog, gave her a quick swat to butt with a ruler, worked well. There you go, Heather. It's that teacher in you. Were you, were you wearing were you wearing one of them schoolgirl uh, uh, skirts when you were doing it and you had the little stockings on and the buckle shoes and the little white okay. the, the little there white shirt? Too much there was imagery. Not, there was, there was knotted at the waist with three buttons, three buttons down and a little push up bra. If you were, email me a picture. Linda will give you a discount off your off your next order. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Easy man. <laughs> Sorry. She is a married woman. You can't talk like that to a, a lady. I'm not asking her to have an affair with me. You can't talk like that to a lady. I wasn't asking her to have an affair. I asked a her to send, send me a picture. It's it's. Kayla says, "Oh, poor Linda." Ha ha. It's, yeah, no kidding. I'm sure. I'm. Hey, I, knowing Heather, I'm sure the picture already exists. I'm sure the picture already exists. Next. Oh, my God. That's from your previous life. <laughs> Next. Um, when your dog licks your face, is it really a sign of affection? Oh, I don't know, dog walker guy. This is the, I mean, ask three, ask three dog trainers, you'll get three different three different, you know, you know, opinions on that one. I think it means it you wants know, to eat your face. I mean, no, that's the thing. It's like. You know, I actually don't let my dogs like, you know, lick my face. You know, they lick their butts and stuff. Yeah. Like, why do you yeah. want them to lick? I their know, face I though? know. They lick their cooch. They lick their balls. They lick their. They lick their, whatever they can. You know, so they lick whatever they can. So you know, to me, it's not the worst. I'd rather have a dog licking my face than biting my face. That's so true. you know, I, you know, it's it most likely is a sign. It's probably more on the affection scale than on the non-affection scale. Let's put it that way. Okay. Next. Um. An innocent pick, Barsley. Right. <laughs> uh, come to Linda, come to Ontario. It'd be so fun. Ooh, there's a spa in Collingwood. So, oh. so this is the thing. Um, I'm up for a Manny Petty, just to let you know. You don't want to see his feet, though. Just close your Kayla's eyes. Kayla's not going to be doing the pedicure, but uh, but Linda doesn't have a passport. Number one, and uh, I don't leave Rhode Island. And Linda doesn't travel with me anymore. She doesn't travel with me anymore. So we're busy. Yeah. The kids and I are busy. Yeah. We're yeah, busy. Yeah. She won't be, she won't be going, but um, I'll do a spa day with you though. There you go. Next. No, no comment on that. Okay. Uh, I know. Boo. Someday I'll travel. How do I stop mine from tearing apart his bed? So Barb, you got a couple of options and I mean, these are both serious things. Your dog doesn't get a bed. 
If you have a dog that destroys its bed, no bed. It sleeps on the floor or on the, um, uh, uh, you know, it sleeps on the floor. It sleeps on the um, on the crate on the ground on the crate. Um, or what you do is you get a remote collar, and the, anytime you want to stop any unwanted behavior, you have to do punishment. It's the only way to stop unwanted behaviors. So um, what you do is dog goes for the bed, remote collar stem. This is it uncomfortable? Yes, it's uncomfortable. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. But if you don't stop it, your dog could die. You know, if you don't, you know, dog can ingest stuff from the bed. Um, plus, they destroy your property. And it costs you a lot of money. So some dogs just can't get beds. It's the way it is. Next. Dog is more nervous about prong than e-collar. Work it out before progressing or skip to remote. You can go right to you can go right to remote. Try to do a lot of food training with your dog as well, along with it. Next. Heather says she's a I'm a busy dance mom. You are a busy dance I, mom. <laughs> my first instinct was to say, shut up. But it's true. It's true. I am. I am. And you know what? And I'm sorry, but after watching Romy last yesterday do 90 minutes of ballet, she's a freaking athlete. And she does ballet three times a week. She's, a, she's literally an athlete. 90, yep. 90 minutes of ballet nonstop, no water breaks, no breaks. It was amazing. It's yeah, amazing. you know what? In her, in the other class she does with yep. the younger kids, yep. they're allowed a water break like halfway through. Wow. But Miss P, she's old school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm impressed with her performance. I know. Romy. I know. Uh, ballet don't play. It's true. I it know. It's so true. I Romy's know. gonna go far. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, I'm gonna. She put, loves it. Yeah, I'm gonna put up some photos tonight on Instagram and Facebook of yesterday too with Romy. Yep. Thanks. Um, is there such a thing as too much affection with your dog? Sarah, absolutely. In fact, most most behavioral problems stem from too much affection. I can I can I can actually make that wide paintbrush stroke comment about that. Most bad behaviors are reinforced because of too much affection. Most aggression is created and reinforced by using too much affection. Everybody Everybody, everybody thinks that like people beat their dogs. That's why they're aggressive. Nope. Affection. I see. I mean, I specialize in aggression across the board. That's the common denominator, not enough rules, not enough structure and overly affectionate with their dog. Mm. Those are the three big things. Put them all together. You're most likely to have an aggressive dog if your dog is being prone to aggression. And, that, and it's not a genetic thing because all dogs genetically are prone to aggression. Next. At what age does a puppy qualify for obedience work with prong and e-collar with corrections? Six months? Um, we, start them at, we start them at four months. We start them at four months old. Next. Romy can dance at the spa, outdoor cold and hot baths, big pools, eucalyptus sauna. Kayla, getting Linda to get up to Canada is going to be a challenge. Trust me, she's invited on every single trip that I take. Yeah, and I'm going to travel with the three kids, right? We used to travel in the RV together two months out of the year. It's just not happening anymore. Make sure Jeff doesn't go in any song. You can, I, okay, Kayla, I will send Linda up there. If Linda wants to go, um, if Linda wants to go, I will send him, I will send her up. She can go up there for as long as she wants, a week, a weekend, talk to her. My whole life? You can go up there for the whole life? Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. You think it's cold in Rhode Island? Huh. Next. Uh, I'm not the one whining about the cold this year. Yep. Usual for five month old to regress. Definitely knows command. Absolutely. Absolutely. Next. Oh, I think it's funny. I'll pick her. Maybe it's you. <laughs> right. It's true. But... Five year old for ants to hang with. At some point I will. Not this time. Um, eating Cheerios, enjoying this convo. LOL. Thanks for a laugh. What did Angela have for dinner? Uh, that's all I have. That's, that's it. all I have. Maybe all right, we got guys. a couple more coming in because we're only more. at 58 minutes we're, yeah, here. We're, we're winding down. Um, thanks for everybody for uh, feel free. To, you know what? I didn't even do this. I, I always forget to tell people to share to share this. Feel free to share this. Um, oh, what you can also too. do is you can join our Patreon page. Patreon, P A T R E O N, patreon.com slash. Do you know I'm on your Patreon page? Yes, you are. Solid <laughs> canine training. Um, I put some unique stuff up there that's not seen anywhere else. Um, uh, RVDogTrainer.com, RVDogTrainer.com. Join our Instagram page. I put really great stuff up on Instagram stories that nobody sees anywhere else. So, Instagram stories is also really, really um, unique. Um, so, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Happy Easter to all of you, too. 
Thanks for the entertainment. Love you guys. Thanks, Tammy. Linda, did you pay for a subscription for Patreon? Yes, I did, actually, yeah, Kayla. Yeah, she supports I did. me. Yeah. Patients are... Patient... What the... <laughs> Patients are correction during those doggy, stubborn teen years? Um, correction. Correction. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a good one. If I put peanut butter on my ball sack, do you think it's wrong to let the dog lick it? Um... You know, that's a personal choice. All I know is, you know, take photos of it. You can probably monetize that. Could probably monetize that. Next. Jeff, you have to buy Unique now. I do, Kayla. He used the Uplift Beauty Serum on his eyes. So this this is the this is the thing, Kayla. I support her in anything she wants to do. Whatever she wants to do. All of her businesses, I've been her biggest fan. Mm -hmm. I've been her biggest fan. You're tied with Heather. <laughs> I didn't see Heather finance your your your. I bet if I asked her, she would. Your humongous <laughs> outlay of cash to get some of your businesses going. Adopting a three-year-old chai weenie, and I heard they are hard to train. Any tips for our first meeting? So don't yell at me, Miss T. When you do all caps, that means you're yelling. It's also I think harder she to. She just wants you to pay attention. Okay, it's hard. It's hard to read. So this is the thing. No, it won't be hard to train at all um, if you use balanced training. Um, a lot of structure, a lot of guidance. Why does this keep turning off? I don't know, Jeff. Hmm. Sorry, guys. Maybe it's only just 30 minutes or something. I have to figure that out. Um, a lot of structure, a lot of guidance, balanced training. She had retinal detachment surgery. You did that before with someone who couldn't oh, see. Oh, Miss T. You tell them to not Ms. T, you. I am so sorry. I am so sorry, and I'm being really sincere right now. That was very that was presumptuous presumptuous of me, and um and that was uh, rude of me. And I and I do apologize. That's what I would call a dick move. I'm sorry. I am. I am sorry. I'm apologizing. That's all I can do is apologize. I can't. I can't take it back. And we love you. And we love you. We do love you, Miss T. I will never, I will remember you. I will never make that comment again. What you're going to do is um, lots of structure, lots of leadership, lots of guidance, and um, um, create your dog. Be careful on the affection. Whatever the backstory is on the dog, get rid of it. Um, the dog might be, so Miss T, I don't know if the dog could be your emotional support animal. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's going to be a hard one. ESA dogs, they're, they're not as highly trained as, is service dogs, but some dogs are not prepared for that. Plus, you can't have a dog that's um, um, any growling, any biting. It's, it's humans or dogs. So usually the way it works is you don't determine if that's the right dog yet until you know that it's the right dog. So if you haven't met it yet, you can't predetermine it. Um, you can't predetermine it. But, you know, just, just do your best. Just do your best. All right? That's it. That's it. Okay. Awesome. But All it right. depends on temperament. Um, it's, yeah, temperament has a lot to do with it, but also then also, like, you, you don't need it highly trained, but it also has to have, you know, good public access training. Good public access training. All right, everybody. Happy Easter, Quinn. Thank you. Happy Easter. Madly in love with all of you. We'll talk to you next week. Sometime. Sometime next week. And um, thank you so much. Thanks, Mad Kayla. Madly in love with all of you guys. You guys make um, you guys make these nights really, really special. All right. Good night, everyone. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.